look, last time I talked about uh, backup, we was in an IT committee in June, and uh, I think we managed to put about 80% of the committee to sleep by the end of that meeting. So uh, the 20% of the people that are awake, they'll detect. So hopefully everyone will be awake by uh, morning tea. So let's go. So uh, I'm here today to represent Bez IT Systems. Some of you guys might be aware of us. Uh, we've been here for about 30 years now. Uh, we've been uh, <coughs> Yeah, basically partnering with the <coughs> education for a lot of procurement and IT consultancy. Uh, I've been doing that for probably strongly in the last 14 to 15 years. Um, I've recently uh, joined BEZ uh, as their IT uh, services specialist. <coughs> so, my history, uh, I've worked in IT for about 11 years now, uh, through private and through different MSPs. Uh, and, and working from, you know, on the actual service desk, on the, on the front grounds helping people as well as uh, service delivery uh, and client relationships. Um, so I've definitely, I've walked into my fair share of um, waterfall of cables coming out of, uh, of, of racks and whatnot, and then the client asking, uh, is this the worst you've seen? And then bashfully saying, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's, it's fine, we can fix this. Um, we've also been helping, uh, well, we actually, we strategically partnered with, uh, with uh, Storagecraft for the last 14 years now. Um, and you guys probably know them strongly for the Shadow Protect product. I know that's what I knew them for. Um, but they've really emerged recently in that cloud backup and, and hypervisor-based backup um, solutions. And I'll touch on those today towards the end. Uh, but, uh, but basically, I'd like to focus on the cloud backup or the, that software as a service backup. So judging from uh, Solomon's present this morning, we've noticed like a huge trend not just in corporate, but in education, and the uptake in uh, software as a service platforms, such as Office 365, a uh, bit of G Suite, not so much. But um, basically, these things, they provide incredible uh, productivity tools to businesses and to ed education. Um, but I believe they're missing a really important component, and that's a comprehensive backup solution. Now, before we you know, uh, get away with what that means, we all back up and on on-premises exchange, we're probably all using it now, or you know, hybrid model or whatnot, and you back that up to either LTO tape or to the disk, and then some of it in a white van rocks up, hopefully, and takes it off-site to an undisclosed location, where that's for security, right? So, why would we not do something similar for exchange online? I mean, it's the same data, it's got the same impact on your, you know, on the organization. Uh, we should be having the same kind of safeguards around that as well. So, with Office 365, Microsoft provide the platform. However, you are ultimately responsible for your data. Now, I'm sure there's, in the terms and conditions, they allude to the fact that your data is safe and it's protected and backed up. But, look, if you can find the exact terms or, you know, their guidelines of how that's backed up, where, how often, and how easy it is to restore it, please tell me after this because I've just been using this for many years now and it's still a matter of just asking and they just give you vague responses. One way to put it is, look, it's it's your car in someone else's garage. So your data lives in their environment, you're the one that's ultimately responsible for the data. If the principal comes up to you and says, hey, we need to restore this uh, email address, oh, sorry, this email that we sent out, or a student sent out, has attachments on it, um, I doubt they're gonna be happy with just, oh, I'm sorry, I, it's Microsoft's fault, I can't retrieve that email, or I can't retrieve that data. Doesn't matter who, who with, and after it, ultimately, we're going to be responsible as you know, CIOs and IT managers for the integrity of the data. So let's define backup. So by that I mean a traditional backup. So traditional backup, the definition, is a full copy of your data at a point in time that allows you to easily do a single item restore, such as an email or a file attachment, if required to the original or alternate location that is retained for an extended period of time greater than 30 days. So that's like a bit of a baseline that we can all agree on that, yeah, okay, that's traditional backup. So what should be covered in the traditional backup? Your exchange data, no brainer. All your email activities. So that would be you know, your student's mailbox, your faculty's mailboxes, any attachments in those, calendars and contacts. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to restore you know, a calendar of you know, a series of uh, calendar items in that for someone if they need to do a restoration of a corrupt mailbox or lost data. 
OneDrive and Google Drive. So we're seeing uh, a lot of uptake in, in document libraries and, and, and you know, with SharePoint and whatnot. But more and more, people are using this personal storage that you know, might be part of their, their cloud offering or part of the platform, but they're using that as, as you know, like a working file folder that they're just putting important documents on. That might not be covered under a, uh, you know, a, a network drive's backup. Obviously, the, the SharePoint document libraries. If anyone here has ever tried to restore a file that might be corrupt or overwritten in SharePoint, it's not fun. <coughs> you have to contact Microsoft if you're getting in trouble, and generally they're going to restore the whole document uh, library over the top of the, the old one. That's not great. And public shared folders as well. People are still using those. They pretty much show up as shared mailboxes in Office 365 on that platform. So they, they should be being backed up. A lot of people will say to me when I talk about backup in the cloud or that it's okay. I've bought litigation hold licensing for my Office 365 license. Or I've got in place hold. I'll just use eDiscovery to look up an email and restore that. That's not going to happen. It's not an alternative to backup. That's not what it's used for. If we go back to the definition of what we said backup was, it's not in the secondary physical location. You're still using that garage to store that. If the garage burns down, your backup and your production goes down with it. Microsoft have bad days. I've lived through them, they're not fun. Recovery is a manual and time consuming process with that. So, I mean, if you want to be conservative, over a couple of years, you might have 30, 40,000 items in a mailbox. If you go and restore that from litigation hold, every single email, including the ones you deleted from all your reports or your, you know, your spam, that comes with it. So it goes from someone coming to your office saying, oh, thank you for restoring that mailbox, that's fantastic. Then looking at the mailbox and going, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see through this to find that one email that, that I need to find, right? Uh, storage capacity grows exponentially over time with that, just backs onto that. And it doesn't, um, it doesn't cover unlicensed archive users. So if a student leaves or a faculty member leaves, and you know you've got your uh, you know one of your IT guys to remove the, the license because they're expensive, you don't want them looking around from the actual mailbox, like the litigation hold stuff that goes with it, and Microsoft just blows that data away after a soft delete, delete period. It's hard to delete it. You can't recover that at all. So, what are the common the common whys around why we should be you know worried about backing up and restoring your software as a service? data. End user deletion, intentional or accidental. So that you know you might have <coughs> two people name quite similarly, you've deleted that user account or that mailbox, and yeah, you, you've stumbled across that that problem with the license gets blown away, that data gets blown away, it gets put into their kind of pseudo recycling bin for 30 days if you've got it set up. Actually before I go further, who here actually uses Office 365 now for their platform? Um, for their schools. That's most of the people here. I'm not, I'm not like telling you guys you're not doing it right, but please, after this, log on to your uh, Exchange uh, portal and just have a look at the the health profile on it. So like it gives you like your security health number, your score, and I think it's around about, it's out of like a score of about 300, 400. Most of the people that um, approach us to come and to take over their tendencies for them and to manage them for them, their scores are like 10 out of 400. It's insane. It's literally just out of the box. Oh yeah, cool, it's all covered. I don't have to think about it, set and forget. It's all, all the templates, I'll just use all that stuff. It'll be fine. And it's only after the fact that they look back and go, oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't set that up properly. My retention policies, uh, you know, my retention tags and all my things, are, they're just out of the box. Overwritten data, it's accidental, that happens. We've all been there, we've all had to recover someone where the payroll officers come up to you and said, hey, kind of uh, accidentally uh, overwrit some of the, uh, the, the payroll data stuff uh, in my Excel spreadsheet that I keep it all in. Um, I did about two weeks ago, and I only know about it now. So can we go ahead and, uh, yeah, restore that. Malicious action, unfortunately that happens. So it could be someone covering their tracks, 
it could be you've accidentally given out access to files or you know to the uh, SharePoint document library or something like that to third parties, and they've gone ahead and deleted some of the contents of that. So it's that stuff actually happens. It's rare, but it does. You've got to be protected against that. So migration as well, software as a service. So you might be thinking of going, okay, cool, I'm going on-prem, going to hybrid, I'm just going to go full bang into O365. You need to be prepared for the loss of data. So make sure you've got a decent kind of backup strategy around that, because it is common. Excuses. So back when I was in school, the dog ate my homework. That's why I couldn't get the assessment in. Nowadays, it's probably the Russians, they encrypted my one, my one drive. So, I mean, if you've probably been in a situation where, uh, you know, Johnny comes in, says to the teacher, Miss, oh, look, um, I had that assessment. It was in my OneDrive, it was in my mailbox. It was there like five days ago. I've looked for it. It's not there anymore. I swear I did it. It's <coughs> in an extension. Then the teacher will come to you know, us as the IT managers, the CIOs, and say, hey, look, Johnny here swears that the, uh, the file was there. Can we get a backup? Can we can restore from a backup and whatnot? You need to make sure that, you know, think about the, the end of that scenario. So you've probably got an R8 uh, parent saying, hey, you call my kid a liar, you're saying that the file isn't there. I pay my school fees. I think uh, the system should have this file. We should have things in place to recover this data. So again, this is a pretty big why, so <coughs> we should have some sort of backup solution to try and mitigate that sort of risk. Uh, ransom cloud. So, Ransomware, we, we all kind of know what that was, the, the water fires and, and, and whatnot, that's pretty crazy. Uh, Ransom Cloud's pretty new to me, which is scary, because I was in the mainstream exchange online for, for over probably three years now, and I had never heard of Ransom Cloud until this year. Um, so what I've done is I've got a video um, demonstrating an actual Ransom Cloud event, which basically is like, uh, like Ransomware as a service, where you can purchase this if you're you know, not a savvy coder, but you've got criminal intent. You can purchase this and then try and maliciously kind of crypto someone's exchange of Office 365 mailbox. It's crazy. Oh, including SharePoint and OneDrive. Um, yeah, Kevin Metnick. So you probably know that guy. If you don't, Google him. He's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to run this for a couple of minutes. It'll explain exactly what Ransom Cloud is. So let's take a look. <coughs> One moment we should be receiving an email. So let's wait for it. And here we go. We got an email from Anti-Spam Pro. Let's uh, actually open it up. Seems legit. And I'll zoom in a little bit. And what this email appears to be coming from Anti-Spam Pro, it looks like it's coming from Microsoft. And it basically says that they're improving their Anti-Spam Pro product. And they've launched a new service to basically keep spam out of your Outlook 365 box in the email, which, you know, nobody likes spam. And in the email, it asks the user to click the following link. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to keep signed into the same account. So they have now, left what's popping up still is inside. a request that this application, this anti-spam pro application, have access to your data, be able to sign in as you, read your contacts, read your email, and this sort of thing, which seems completely appropriate with an anti-spam product that has to actually read all your emails to kind of check to see if those emails could be spam. So we'll go ahead and accept. We click accept. No, we don't want to stay signed in. And as soon as you, one of your users accepted those terms and conditions of the application, that's where the mistake was made. What they did is they enabled what we call an OAuth token, giving the bad guy, the threat actor, complete control over your cloud-based email. So let's go into our email and see what could, what could happen here. So go back to, into our email, right? And if you look at the email, it looks perfectly fine. But what if the bad guy wants to encrypt your email, essentially bringing ransomware to the cloud? So let's pay attention. I'm gonna go ahead and simulate what a bad guy can do. So keep looking at the, at the display. Now look, in real time, 
all your emails are suddenly being encrypted or scrambled. You can read the header, but the body of your email message is completely encrypted. So let's give it a second and let it finish. We just received a message that your emails have been encrypted. Let's take a look at this message. We take a look at it, and it's the typical type of ransomware message. Whoops, your emails have been encrypted. Can I recover my emails? Sure. And the way to recover your emails is to send here $300 of Bitcoin to this Bitcoin address. So this is exactly what the bad guys could do by phishing your users in a cloud-based environment, right? So let's actually take a, take a look at the emails here. If we take a look, you can see, read the header, but all the contents of your emails and attachments are completely encrypted and inaccessible to you. So that was in 2016. So 300 bucks worth of Bitcoin, but 0.08 of Bitcoin. So I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm not saying that I want it to happen anymore. I'm just saying that's what was out there two years ago. So what are we, we should be worried about what's around the corner. What are the stuff that we're going to learn about in six months' time that we go, oh my God, that was around then? We need to be putting systems in place now to protect our data for future events. So like I mentioned, we've strategically partnered with StorageCraft for their cloud backup service. Now we provide this as a service, we provide the licensing. And the reason why we've, we've chosen to go with this is because it ticks a lot of those boxes I mentioned before. It's fast to restore. In seconds, restore deleted users, covers files and folders in their native formats to their native location, and to different owners. So you know, if the student leaves two years ago and you need to restore it to a teacher's mailbox, it's no matter of running up that mailbox again, you can restore it to the teacher's mailbox. Set up, monitor, and manage all clients within the same portal. Everyone loves portals. No need to log into in and out of each, uh, in and out of each account. So that's I know that is one headache with managing exchange. When you want to manage a different mailbox, you need to kind of pseudo sign into that mailbox and, and do all that stuff. Again, <coughs> it's backed up in a safe, successful, twenty-four-seven. Data tr transmitted and stored in encrypted format, and resides in secure Azure or Amazon S3 data centers. You can choose. So today what we would like to offer, Bez, is that special pricing for education of 280 per mailbox per month. Now, I know you guys have IT levies in your schools. I firmly believe you need to be factoring something like this in, either like a co-payment or it, this, it needs to happen. It's not just a matter of just giving someone over the mailbox and saying, there you go. Um, also, if you don't believe it, you can start with 60 days free. So, as I ask you for members, you've got 60 days to trial this product. Um, so, there's really not much to lose. Just chuck on something, see if you like it. Yeah. Uh, also, Shadow Safe, that's a uh, storage craft solution for that hypervisor level uh, backup. Now, today, also, uh, well, for, for ISQ members, for the next uh, couple of months, we're offering a kind of BOGO, buy one, get one uh, for the socket licensing. Uh, and it's safe for the on-prem kind of backup solution as well. So look, uh, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to you guys about this. Um, look, come and challenge me on it. Come, let's have a talk about it after this during lunch, because um, this stuff, yeah, it, it does affect productivity. Thank you. Yeah, so I've got a little like a storage card pack that I'll give to you so you can have it. I mean, there is a plethora of these 